Wow, Jose Manuel, I, as I say, thank you for, for staying for a, a little bit longer. <laughs> there is a lot of questions that I still have on my mind, and I, I would like to, to jump into, into that. No? The, the first one is to talk about eradication. We have some, let's say, people that they are saying that partial depopulation is something that it's a good strategy for eradication. What do you think about this, this, this strategy of partial depopulation, de especially, especially in Asia, no? So it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's terribly dangerous uh, to, to thinking that by partial eradications they're going to, to win the situations, because, especially because they don't perform a real good partial eradications. Partial eradications mean, because sometimes they use the populations, partial depopulation to the eradication, so that, that means they have big farms, very big farms, with a fantastic number of animals. So they cannot kill all the farms or all the animals around because there are too many. So what they do is that they kill the animals that are infected and they immediately or very quickly put new animals in this area again. But they do so fast, so quickly, that they don't disinfect it well. They don't put sentinel animals to be sure that there is no virus around. So the system that they use is really not good. And they reinfect it and reinfect it again. So it's a problem. It's a never-ending history. You know? Never so is it's, going it's to finish with the system that they are using. The, the advantage that they have is that in China, they need so much pig meat that they sell even the infected one. And that is why there are so much virus around. And this is why the people that use leftover to feed the animals are reinfected again. And this is why they have so much reinfection. So they really don't have a real eradication program. That brings me to a, to a, a, a thing that I'd like to, to say. When we talk about ASF, I always, or I like to say that I think that it's African swine forever in some <laughs> places. Because these, these are strategies that make almost impossible. Not yeah, to... the strategy is very important because, you know, in every country, you have to find the real, the real recipe, you know? It's not a recipe forever in African swine fever or for around the world. You need to know the culture, the traditions. Everything is important if you want to afford the eradication exactly. of one disease. And you have experience because the people may think, well, but Jose Manuel, you know, he was the great guy on nineties in Spain that he was eradicating that, uh, but uh, come on, uh, he did not have more experience in doing this eradication. And that's not true because <laughs> I, if I, I would like that you explain a little bit this last experience with, with Sardinia, no? that, yeah. that Sardinia, they, they have African swine forever for yeah. a long, long period of time. No? Yeah. And you have, let's say, the success of eradication there. Can you explain a little bit about that, Jose Manuel? Sure, sure, with pleasure. Sardinia, Sardinia get the ASF in 1978. And like many places where you control and relatively control the disease, you can survive with ASF. That's happened also in our countries. In our countries, we get the, the disease in the 60s, and until the 90s, we was not starting to the eradications. And when in the 90s, our sector, our swine industry was very good already. And the reasons why we decided to go to the eradication was because the European Union. So we will join the European Union. Our product at that time was very important. And even with ASF, we increased the swine industry. So that means that in Sardinia happened a little similar. They adapted to live and survive. But it looks like ASF. impossible, sorry for cutting here, no? because thinking that an island, that it's yeah. something as easy as could be an island to eradicate something, <laughs> why they don't, we're having success to, to, to I, do I, that. I would, to, like, I would like to know that, Jose. I'm Bruno. going to explain you why. <laughs> really? the Sardinia, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful yeah, place. It is, it's it beautiful. is, oh my goodness. I recommend you to go there. Because I've been there, I've been there. It's a lovely place. Beautiful. It's a lovely place. So they have an area that they call Nuoro, and this Nuoro area was a very particular place because they have a lot of wild boar, but not only wild boar. That was the point because the Sardinian people for many years, they thought that the biggest problem was the wild boar. And, and this is why we... It was not the wild boar? No, no, no. No kidding. Yes, yes. We discovered it was not like that. No, uh, yeah, really? Yeah. So when uh, the, the 
president of Sardinia. You know, Sardinia is an independent uh, community. In, they, they have their own gubernament, etc. So they contract our university to help it. And the reasons why that happened is because they cannot stay more with African swine fever in Sardinia because the Russians uh, was telling that why in Russia they have ASF so only in one area and they close the whole country and Italy have an island infected and not the whole Italy was infected. Uh, yeah, so, so it's a political issue. Then, absolutely. Huh? So when the political issue starts, so the people of Parma said, hey, you, you better eradicate Sardinia, otherwise we're going to have trouble. So in that, tri in that time, and the Sardinian government decided to contract with our university uh, to help in the program. So we went there and we start to do all our risk assessment, all our risk, uh, you know, all the studies, yeah. because we have, we have a, when we go to work in one place, we understand everything. We try to understand everything, not just the disease in particular, it's everything, the costumes, uh, many things. So we found that they have an, a special production similar to the Iberico, to our outdoor production, yeah. but yeah. with no control, absolutely no control at all. No biosecurity, no special rule or regulations. It was outdoor production, I understand? Yes, yes, absolutely wild. wild. I mean, this, uh, most of these places only have a little houses, but was not even a farm, you know, little places to sleep the animal, but there was completely freedom. So they go to take the grass, they eat outside, you know, that is wonderful. And most of these animals belong to farmers that they have a regular farms as well. And once in a while, they go to give it supplementary food. But at the same time, you know, there's like three altitudes in this area, where the, the, lock, the domestic pig was, this brado system, because they need grass and all these things, and the wild boar, uh -huh. okay? So uh, we uh, study everything there, and we found that the center, the epicenter, of African swine fever was the Prado system. No kidding. Yes, the Prado. <laughs> Not the wild boar. Not the wild boar. Which, the, which, wild, the wild boar know. was infected from the Prados. So <laughs> we prove that. We, we make thousand in research. We prove it against everybody because everybody was surprised. Why the Prado? Brados are suffering. No, Prado are. And the reason is very easy. You know, the Prado was the, the, the farmer of the regular farm. They came to give it meat, uh, you know, feeding this brado, and so they sometimes take back the virus to the domestic. But at the same time, the wild boar, when they don't have food enough in the forest, they're coming down to also join the brado. So the brado was the communications between both populations, domestic and wild boar. So, and so then, killing the brado? Exactly. No? Killing the brado was the solution. And, and you solve with that or not? <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> what happened to the well? That was more difficult. <laughs> no, no kidding, really. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to tell there? you why. Because, well. you know, we, we really had data, and everybody, all the Italian team, everybody in the administrations, the Italian, the Italian, no, the, the Sardinian administration, was completely clear that there was the problem. So you so, convinced them that the brother was the problem and I, I, the I prove it. I prove you it. You prove that. I prove it. Cool. And I convinced the administrations, the Sardinian administration. So they start to, you know, to kill, put, to kill the Brado system because it was even an illegal production, an illegal production. But what happened? The first day that they went to start this killing program, there was a secret, you know, Secret, but secret in Europe, you know, <laughs> everybody knows. <laughs> it's difficult. So when we went there, everybody, all the people living in this town was in the highway, you know, with black clothes, you know, falling down, sleeping on the, on the highway to avoid that we go in. No. So my goodness, it oh. was unbelievable. We was more than half hour waiting what happened here until we received the order to go back, not, not to continue the operation. I was so angry because I spent so much time working with all my team, working there to prove that. So I went to, to see the president. The president. The president. Of, yeah, the, the president, president of Sardinia. The president of Sardinia really? was a fantastic person. So you, you he, deal with this kind of people? Yes, uh, oh, yeah, he, because he was the ones that really contracted us. Okay, you know? cool. And I have meeting with this president. Okay. president was a fantastic person in okay. my life. I, I think was a fantastic president at that time. So. I went very angry and finally I talked with him. And he showed me one thing that I will never forget. 
he told me, Jose, from the scientific point of view, you not only proved and demonstrated that this is true, you even convinced our technical people, but you still don't convince the people of the island, the people that have the Brado, and everybody loves the Brado, because you know Brado have a different testing. It's more like Iberico, because they have grass, they don't have too much you know, I commercial see. feet. And, I see. and, and so in the, the piglets was so wonderful in the restaurant. Said, they have a business there, an important business. You have to convince these guys. And I said, but you know, I am not psychology, I am not a magic, I am not a veterinarian working the virus. And he said, you should work also on this other point because oh. convince is as much important as prove it or demonstrate it. That's really a nice, a nice idea, no? And that a means nice lesson. I, you know? I learned a, a, a great lesson from the Sardinian president, yes. Do you know, you, you're great because people like you are the ones that they... they the people that say, I, I'm always learning, I'm always learning lessons, yeah. and, and, yeah. and are the ones that they are teaching more, you the, the, the best the best way that they can yeah. teach. No? So, so what, what's the conclusion after that? So it's not only about science, it's about something else. Yes. So now when you are thinking about, or if someone, if a government, they say, Jose Manuel, can you help us to eradicate uh, African swine fever? Uh, that means that you, you, you're still thinking about something else than yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm going to tell you, for example, the sample of China, where I also try to do that. But China is a very big country, oh, and it's more difficult to convince the people, even to see the people. China has a big problem, and it's related with the, the way that the traditions that they have. They use the leftover from restaurants and from houses to feed the animals. Mm -hmm. And so they, they keep doing that because they do for centuries. And you know, the, the, the pig for these guys is like a, the vacuum cleaner, organic vacuum cleaner. So they use that, so that means that they still do that. So we tell, but listen, these products are contaminated, so you are reinfecting. It's very difficult to change traditions, culture, everything is very difficult. So in the, in the area where they have this family production, is, this is why they lose so much pig in this area, more than in the industrial one, in the, in the families one, because they keep their tradition. They even buy blood in the, super, in the supermarket, in the slaughterhouse, to, to mix with the cereals and give it to the animal. So you see, blood is full of virus, as you can imagine, because many of the infected animals go to the slaughterhouse, to the slaughterhouse well, yes. in some ways. So this is a problem. So it's a problem, it's a sociological and cultural problem. So that's why the way how in my team we approach eradication of any disease is not only knowing a lot about the disease, it's also knowing a lot about the social and the culture and the behavior of this particular country if you want to stop a disease like this one. That's interesting. But yeah, you know, COVID is the same. It's not the same to fight with COVID to one Mediterranean country that we have so much social life we used to have, because not well, anymore. No, no, but, you know, it becomes more <laughs> difficult. Yeah, absolutely. That if you go to the north of Europe, that the people even don't see until summer and summer. So, you know, you have to understand the sociology of the disease. Otherwise, it's very difficult. And in China, we have at least four different epidemiological scenarios. Sociological scenarios. So that means that maybe the approach in China should be working with these four different scenarios. Absolutely, absolutely, because the rules. So and that the is not, not a specific rule that may work for all. No, no. It's a, in general, you, even in Europe, you know, it's not the same what is happening in Romania that is what's happened in Germany, or That's it's not true. the same. But this, if you if you really don't know that, or you don't pay attention, because you go with the idea only about the disease, and you said the disease is the same. No, the behavior of the disease is not the same. The virus is the same. The behavior is not the same. But that's happened in many viruses and diseases, including COVID. So you but have consider, to consider, adapt it. Do you understand? You have to course, understand. No, but, but considering the situation that we have in uh, Asia, mainly in, in, in commercial population, let's, let's call it like this, or, or Europe uh, mainly in, in, in wild boars or even in farms. No? So how, how I, I don't think that it should be easy to, to, to deal with wild boars. Uh, how, how can you eradicate a wild boar population? I'm going to tell you the most funny things. In, in Asia, they have more population of wild boar than we have in Europe. 
In Europe, most of our outbreaks are from wild boar. In Asia, they only declared seven outbreaks of wild boar. Why? Because they still don't understand the role of the wild boar in the spread of the disease. They have so much trouble with regular spread that they don't understand still the biggest problem. Sense. And the biggest problem of Asia is the, 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 the wild boar. But they still don't even think about that. They even don't think about it. So that. that brings me to the strategy that, that, that uh, the, the best strategy is the one to start controlling wild boar. Well, this should be a very Let's important... talk about the vaccine. No? Yeah, I'm, talking, yeah. I'm thinking about the vaccine yeah, yeah. strategy. Yeah, yeah. The vaccine. So it wild, will be crucial to start with wild boar. Yes, and yes. Then... The population is so big in, in, in Asia. If you compare the high population that they have compared with us, that we also have a very high populations in some places, even saying 700% more than used to be. So our population in wild boar is tremendously high, but in Asia it's even more. And they only declare seven outbreak because they really don't think in that the problem is the wild boar. And the wild boar is a big problem in Asia, bigger than in Europe, but they still are with other because they are still don't solve the problem of the, of the leftover, they are still don't solve the swill feeding, they are still don't solve other problems that are more obvious but not probably the real deep problem. <laughs> and let me, Jose Manuel, jump to another topic that I think that it's, it's always under discussion, which is the compartmentation. No? Yeah. So uh, what do you think? Well, first of all, for, for those that they don't know what, what it's about, can you explain a little bit what's the idea behind yeah. compartmentation? Yeah. And then my second question related to that, what do you think about this strategy? I, I, I think it's a lovely idea from the OIE, I think OIE was the ones that proposed that, the World Organization for Animal Health. And, and they thinking in this particular uh, model of control in diseases where wildlife is involved. So diseases like African swine fever, diseases like avian influenza, so where wildlife is, is involved. And, and the idea is why one country that is perfectly organized to control and protect the domestic because they have a wild boar near the farm, have to be considered infected as a country and stop all the trade with the domestic. So if you think in serious you said, it's true. To have a wild boar, even a 100 meter, don't mean that I'm going to have it if I have a very biosafe Bio yes. so. yes. If I have so a good fence, if yeah. I have good biosecurity Yeah, it's, it's possible to do it. Yeah. So that is the concept of compartmentalization, is a system different than the regionalizations, that is what we have in Europe, regionalizations. The regionalization means that you can have an infected country and only the infected area is closed, but the rest is clean to movements. Mm -hmm. Of course, this is mainly accepted only in the European Union. But this is important for us because sometimes one country can have an accident and it's not the end for this country. They can go ahead because we have good system to, to clean the other part. But in this, uh, this other, the, the compartmentalizations, they go directly to thinking in countries in general that could be affected by wildlife. So the case of ASF is a particular case. The problem of this is that you, as a farmer, have to pay absolutely for all the cost of the control of your system, of your farm. That don't, it's not just the farm, it's the farm, your veterinarians, your slaughterhouse, your traveling, your trucks, everything. The whole system of production have to be under a control and biosafety and pay it by the farmer. And this is very important if you are an exporter country or a big farmer that you're going to export. But they have another problem that you have to solve in before, and is that not necessary the rest of the countries are going to approve the compartmentalization. Mm. So if you have compartmentation, automatically you are not approved with the idea. There could be countries accepted and countries that not. Mm. So compartmentalization at this moment have to be for countries or for farmer, exported farmer, that first of all, make an agreement with the customers about who will accept compartmentalization, even in my country will be infected because otherwise it's no sense to do it. It's not a good deal. 
So this is uh, interesting. This is one. Yeah. Let me let me jump uh, to. I, I, we, we don't have a lot of time left, but uh, time flies. <laughs> I, I don't but, know. But give you two hundred euros. <laughs> could be could be good. I, I can take my my American Express. <laughs> no, no. I uh, I don't want to lose the opportunity to talk about 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 the vaccine. Ah, the vaccine is a very important vaccine issue. and vaccines and 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 uh, well, you always I hear you several times saying that how important is three things: safety, safety, and safety. You know? And then you have maybe four things, which is the DIPA vaccine. So, what happens with with uh, all these vaccines that they are running up and forth? And I, I have to explain. I have to spend you a little more time to understand that. But I think it's a fantastic question. African swine fever, after the disaster in the 60s, with the attenuated vaccinations that protected to the homologous virus, but not to heterologous virus, because you, you don't forget there is no neutralizing antibodies. So that means that the mechanism more effective to control virus diseases is not in this disease. But if you give to the immunity time, they will respond. So if you don't kill the pig, if the, if the virus is not so acute, they kill the pig. If it's attenuated, the animal develop an immune system with humoral and cell mediated immunity that is protecting the animal of the disease. In many cases, not in all the cases, but in many cases. So the mechanism after many disaster of, of you know, tendons and, and make experiment, etc., was discovered by the molecular biology system, not by the immunology. At the immunology, we still don't understand which are really the proteins that induce, the vital protein that induce, induce. this kind of immune response. But what we learned was which are the genes that are related with virulence. So many people decided, okay, if we remove the virulent genes, we're going to have an attenuated strain, probably it's going to protect it. And that's why today is full of <laughs> belated vaccine, you know? And they are doing attenuated, that could be the same disaster that Botija have in the past, or the Portuguese have in the past. It's go back to the 60s. Exactly, it's going back to the 60s. Because the secret is not only not be violent, the, the problem is to protect. So the cross protection in ASF is complicated because you cannot do in vitro assays like zero neutralization. You said this, this, this virus. It respond by serum neutralization to this, this, this. You have to do all this in vivo, in vivo, in vivo. Only in vivo you're going to see if you have crop protection, you know? So this is long time and a lot of experiment and a lot of money. But if you want to do a safety vaccine, because you, we don't want to go back to the system. No one. Yeah. Well, Asia probably is going to go back to the system because they are doing already experiments with vaccine that has been not well tested, not even done with a lot of animals, to be sure. How dangerous is that? Well, it's dangerous. They're going to fool up the country of attenuated uh, strains that probably have, uh, you know, the lesions. They're going to have side effects. Probably they, you, they're going to have lesions. They will not grow up as fast and as quick that the other, but they will not die. <laughs> so they will not eradicate at the end? Or they not will the not way. It's going to be chronic infection around. That is why it's so important. And we knew that. And that's why we have a very different strategy in Bacteria system. How, how close we are? I would like to tell you that the project is three years more ahead. So I hope that before we arrive to the end, if everything is running like now, uh, we are quite convinced that we're going to have a good product. Because where we are now? We are now in the way that we have two good prototypes that has been already testing in animals, in domestic and in wild boar, that uh, have very, very, very uh, little uh, side effect, but one to 10 or one to five, and it's relatively easy to control. But uh, in wild boar, not at all. They don't have any problem. That have a big protection and more than 90, around 90% of protection. Wow. Yeah, a lot. Wow. And with some etherologous virus as well. Wow. So we are, we are in a way that we are really uh, very promising with these results. We are now working in two ways. One is to reduce 
if it's possible, these little side effects that is observing in domestic, one to five or one to 10, but not in wild boar. Uh, we have a, a strategy for that. So if we reduce that and we keep the safety and the, and the, and the effi efficiency, and it's deep already, it's going to be a fantastic prototype. We are working with you, as you know, with the company, and it's wonderful to say that two things for me. One, I am learning a lot since I'm working with your company about vaccine, even that I have spent my life with that, but to working with a, a industry, a company that know a lot about how to produce a vaccine is fantastic. I think this joint meeting that we have, this joint consortium is good for both, for you because you are learning about the ESF, sure. from us because we are learning about vaccine a lot. And the most beautiful thing, both of us agree that the most important 100% three times is safety. And an oral vaccine. Yes. Because it should be in another way, no? Yeah, for, for wild boar have to be oral. Yeah, it's no other way to vaccinate them. Yeah. It's, it's no way to vaccinate wild boar. So then the strategy will be, let's start with wild boar and then jump to the... Mm -hmm. we, we, no? we are in parallel. Okay. Yeah, we have through laboratories, two laboratories working in domestic, all, all, one laboratory working on wild boar, uh, totally with the same prototype sometimes, or different conditions, but one is dedicated to wild boar and the other two are dedicated to, to domestic. So we are doing a lot of experiments together, but in different places and with different type of uh, host. So we, we do in parallel. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Well, we are, we are just almost out of the uh, of the time and uh, Jose Manuel I think that it's been a great 30 minutes of conversation uh, I I already enjoy a lot in the in the first six minutes that we have in a talk show but then to have this extra time I think that it was something something that I want to first say thank you for accepting to do that because I know that you are always busy so the fact that you say yeah I can yeah. stay for a little and bit I longer feel it's in, been, I feeling wonderful it's been, talk it's with been you good. is a pleasure Mikel no you know that no. yes I really enjoy very much too so even I was ready to give you my American Express to well, I this see party. that you <laughs> are so always so kind with me so no thank you very much Jose Manuel and and let's let's see how and when we will have all these all these things no okay. after this beautiful thank you Miquel thank, thank you very. Jose Manuel thank you very much. and with that I want to say thank you you for for being for being there it's been a pleasure to have the person to talk about African swine fever Jose Manuel Sanchez Vizcaíno thank you